Hey everyone, Trian here, your leadership performance coach. Welcome back to the Be That Create That social channel, where we're going to share with you another one of our great community. Her name is Dr. Lauren. I'm going to bring her on and she's going to share what she's been doing to make an impact, create that ripple effect. Um, and when she comes on, she's going to share what she's done, where she's from, um, what she's passionate about in our leadership space. And I just cannot wait for you to meet her. I have probably secretly been following her for, I'm not even really sure how long, and I don't even know if she knew that. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and bring her from backstage so that you all get the chance to meet her as well. Here we are. Hello. Hi. Hi, Trin. Good to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you. We were kind of joking when we first came on, I, you know, I said, oh, good morning. And you're like, good evening. Or, so why don't you share with people um, where you're from and, you know, what you do and what kind of led you into this uh, coaching space that you're in now? Oh, with pleasure. The where you're from question is relatively difficult. We're kind of all over the show, but originally I was born and raised in South Africa. I'm currently based in Germany, but my husband is Turkish. So right now I'm having this interview from Turkey <laughs> where we like to spend. So digital nomading it a little bit, hence not, not a great uh, microphone for the podcast, but you know, also not the best background. Apologies for that. But um, yeah, we're all over the show. Um, we live kind of between Turkey, Germany. Um, I visit South Africa, obviously, as often as I can. A very international, very multicultural, diverse uh, family and that is actually one of the big things that also moves into my business you know focusing if we're going to talk about leadership on on diversity is one of the very central pillars um, of my business so that's one of the things that I also bring into leadership is looking at diversity looking at inclusion looking at how do people have access to education right and knowledge that they can use to elevate their own future right so the name of my company is is elevated futures LLC and and that is simply because in a nutshell, of all the things that I do, um, I believe that everyone should have the opportunity to elevate themselves, access to the knowledge, the information, and to the guidance that they need when they make the decision and they are willing to commit, because not everybody is, right? If you want to be exceptional, you've got to do things that not most, most people are not willing to do. I think we've all heard that <laughs> quite mm -hmm. often. Um, and so that's the foundation of my business. But to, to keep it simple for everyone listening, I'm a business strategist, I'm an educator, and I'm a coach. So I have a very, very diverse background. We're going to go back to that word probably quite, quite often. Um, most people look at my CV and think I'm slightly schizophrenic. Um, I, have, <laughs> I have degrees in a number of things. That's because I'm very multi-passionate. Um, but I also believe that that diversity really gives me the ability to help my clients um, at all different levels within their business because business especially in the online space, regardless of what you're doing, you need to understand and look at the big picture. You need to understand the ecosystem so that you can pivot and adapt because it's very, you know, context specific and, and our context is changing all the time and it's very dynamic. So my background is obviously I have a traditional business background. I have an MBA. I have all of that, but I actually have my PhD in sociology, which has been an incredible help to bring you know, the leadership, the personal development, the mindfulness, um, the understanding of, of who we are, community, all these kinds of topics, which are really, you know, essential for running any business. I think we've all seen this shift um, relatively recently, you know, business with education in the traditional sense, highly masculine, highly focused on KPIs, highly focused on business numbers, um, you know, strategies that are cut and paste, all the models, everything. And that worked for a long time. But now we're seeing this, this craving for, for the personal touch, for the personal connection. And, and so even if we just take something very, very simple, like a, a client avatar, you know, we used to focus so much on demographics. And now basically that's almost irrelevant. It's the psychographics how people think, what they're doing, what they value, what their beliefs are, et cetera, that are so important. And therefore, I believe that if you're going to, you know, work with people in this space as a coach, as a leader, as someone in business, you need to also understand yourself in a similar way, your psychographic self, mm -hmm. in order to create a match that means you can serve the right people in the right way. Yeah, and, um, so and that's easy. People come to us and they... 
I wouldn't say that they hold it not as a whole think that all the problem is with the other people, but they definitely do. I feel like even, you know, I'll take a topic so much as communication. Why can't I get my team to listen to me? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's yeah. go back. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, how are you communicating? What are they hearing? What questions are you asking? And um, I feel like business yeah. has definitely changed in that way where it's not always about the leader being the resource, but the leader exactly. is teaching their group to be resourceful. And that is quite absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Self-sufficiency, right? Mm -hmm. the, the giving of space, the enablement, the empowerment, um, you know, that the self-organization of teams is something that I work with a lot um, coming out of academia. So I'm actually a professor for international business management as well. So I have a very strong academic background. And I think that also helps to really understand the theoretical basis. I know people are like, oh, yeah, theory, we don't need that. But, you know, to really understand how these systems work, how we can think in systems, how we can think about the complexity of representing ourselves and how we connect that self-awareness through our leadership practices. So you were saying about communication, um, about listening, about, you know, being able to pay attention to everything that's going on around us in a very, very noisy space. A great leader nowadays really has to learn to filter all of that. And for me, that filter comes through self-leadership first, self-awareness, um, reflection on, for example, that my team is not listening. Well, I would say our moral intent is the most important check that we can use there to say, well, how did how did I give that message to my team? And what was the reason for that? Mm -hmm. And and so that is, as you say, an incredible shift um, and something that's always at the center of, of what I do with my clients. Because in your business, especially I think many people in the groups, you know, in, in our audience are solopreneurs they are running their own businesses they're doing everything all the time it's, it can get very very overwhelming so that ability to recenter and self-check and, and align is essential because your business is you and you are your advantage mm -hmm. right you have to create yourself um you know everything around yourself is the advantage that you want to put out there and i don't mean advantage in a you know negative competitive way i mean advantage in the sense of how can I create the opportunities and leverage the resources that I have effectively for my business, which benefits my team, which benefits my clients, which creates that holistic impact that we're all looking to create. I also loved that on your, in your Facebook group, it says, don't be the change, which we see all the time, be the change, be the change, but don't yeah. be the change, lead it. So tell me maybe how yeah. you came to add that last little piece to a mm -hmm. quote that many of us know, um, but that's the first time that I've seen that added to the end of it. So where did that come from? Well, I like to think I made it up. It came to me, but probably I read it somewhere. So I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I would love to claim it. But, you know, as, as we all do, we've got so much influencing the way we think and what we do. It might be somewhere else in a book. So I'm not going to mm -hmm. claim uniqueness on that. But it's sure. something I fundamentally believe. And I think that particularly because I'm working in the coaching space, predominantly with coaches and consultants, people who are hired people who are you know building their career on serving clients in a way that actually is supposed to change the way things are being done right mm -hmm. so you need a coach when what you're doing is not working and you need a consultant when what you're doing is not working and so for me being the change um is a little bit too passive so when i started my journey i'm like how am i you know why am i going out of academia why am i going to start my own business you know entrepreneurship is not easy this is not a small decision um, and I was thinking, if I'm going to do this, in what way do I want to do it? Mm -hmm. And so I have very strong values and beliefs, like I said, on diversity, on accessibility of knowledge, of elevating people and enabling and empowering that elevation um, to take control of their future. At the same time, though, if I only orient that on my existing values and beliefs, it's relatively static, in fact. And so it was. it came out of questioning myself. And I said, well, if I'm going to come into social media and a lot of people struggle with this, and this is also leadership online, right? Mm -hmm. I struggled a lot to say what I really believed and what I really thought, because I think many people resonate this in, with this in corporate and in my academic career, I've had a really hard time, particularly as a relatively young female in the German context, foreign, and at the time pregnant, <laughs> you know, I've got two yeah. kids as well. I'm like, everything with me is wrong for many people right. in that context. <laughs> I am not allowed to speak because of this laundry exactly. list of things. Yes. Yeah. And, and saying what you really think, um, which is obviously, if you want things to change, can come across as very critical. 
And I will admit, I, I am absolutely critical, but I am never critical in a negative way, but always in a solution-oriented approach. But the environment has to be ready for change, has to be ready to accept that. And so this was a kind of mantra, I suppose, that I told myself every day that this is how I want to run my business. Mm -hmm. I want to lead the change. And not everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, not everyone is going to agree with me. Not everyone is going to like me. Not everyone, you know, because you fall very quickly um, into the people pleasing kind of flow of the general. We see all the topics, you know, this comes up and everyone's going in this direction. Everyone's going in the other direction. Staying on track means doesn't you know it doesn't mean just wanting to incite change and and to live that change in the way i do it but leading the change means actually also being willing to diversify my own perspective mm -hmm. to to learn to grow and and the things i was doing a year ago in my coaching business i'll say okay that worked yeah sure but what i'm doing now works better because i'm willing to iterate that i'm willing to continuously improve it with my clients with open communication with transparency um, and so it's breaking free of that right versus wrong. And this is applicable to now. And this is the knowledge I have right now. And I'm going to learn and I'm going to grow. And I think through that process, that's what I define as leading the change. Mm -hmm. And leadership itself is about that adaptability. You know, and I, exactly. I would even ask you, you know, what does leadership mean to you? And I think you've kind of already verbalized that is yeah. that we have to be adaptable while we are leading these other people. Um, and accountable to what we are leading. Yeah. Yeah. And admitting mistakes. I mean, there's, you know, I think there's also, unfortunately, there's this pedestal um, culture still where if someone hires a coach or hires me, I'm the the expert. I, I'm, you know, and you deliver something. This is like master planning in a city, right? I, I, I make my perfect plan and then we follow it and we deliver. And that's yeah. just unrealistic in the complexity of the global economy, in the world, with the online space. That just doesn't exist anymore as a context. So there's no point trying to work like that. Um, and I think that leadership in this space is about understanding that context to the best of your ability at that point in time, taking responsibility, admitting stakes, uh, mistakes, being very, very transparent in what we do. I believe that in this space, particularly online, um, you know, the the <laughs> the number of people and programs out there that you know, are challenging the industry and, and the way that coaching is defined is, is very difficult. So I see it, we've got a spectrum um, that is kind of really polarizing at the moment of mass mediocrity with AI produced courses and books and whatever's going on. So people are making a lot of money that way, sure. And I'm not judging it, I'm not criticizing it, but as a coach, as someone who is fundamentally an educator, I'm mm -hmm. on the other side and I believe they're in excellence and that's where leading the change comes from and my definition of leadership comes from as well because I don't mean excellence in an elitist way. I mean excellence in you being excellent for what you want to do in the way that you want to do it to elevate your future. Yeah, in talking with people about don't be in the comparisonitis, it's exactly. what's the best version of you. So here's my best version of you. Here's where we are right now. What is in the gap? And stop looking over there. What is in exactly. your gap? You know, and, and yeah. I feel similar about the AI generated books and all those things, if, if that's what people are wanting to do and that's yeah. where their authenticity. But but for me, it's more about if I put these thoughts out there, they had better be mine because exactly. it's a credibility of I'm a leader and people are going to listen to what is yeah. being said. So I have to be very careful and then accountable to what it is that I'm sharing. So. Absolutely. And, you know, to summarize all of that, I, I work with a model, you know, that and I, I, my framework is an advantage quadrant, which I developed over many, many years to deal with exactly what you're talking about, mm -hmm. that shift in, in complexity. And um, it is about excellence. It's about understanding your expertise, the excellence of what you can really bring to people to help them in their lives, regardless, you know, of what kind of coach or consultant you are, knowledge service provider you are. I work predominantly with, with service providers. Mm -hmm. um, and there's value excellence. So how do you translate that into something that adds value that is kind of like productizing your knowledge? That's number mm -hmm. two. And then number three is very, very much your adaptive excellence. How good are you at rechecking yourself? Because in the center of all of this is you, you as a person, your values, your beliefs, your self-awareness, your self-leadership. So your adaptive excellence comes from understanding what you're doing, why you're doing, and always with intention. And the fourth level 
is really about collaborative excellence. And I think this is a big one for leadership as well. Leadership doesn't mean, you know, in the traditional sense, I'm up here and you guys are all following me, mm -hmm. but it's really about understanding how do we create synergies? How do we create these win-win collaborations? Now, collaborations are difficult. You know, everyone's like, oh, I'm all about collaboration. Of course. But I've had collaborations that have been an absolute disaster. I have and that too. was, uh, yeah, I think most people would not admit that, but it's true. I think most yes. people have, right? Yes. And when I looked and analyzed, you know, those failures, which I think is a big part of leadership as well, say how, how and yes. why did I fail or did I learn? I know we're not supposed to say failure, but, you know, I, it tanked. Let's be honest. It tanked. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I've been like, <laughs> and, I, and I looked at that. <laughs> and so the, the real root of it, I realized, was that I, was not self-aware enough in my values, my beliefs, and they were not in alignment. They were mm -hmm. not in alignment with my expertise, with my value, and they were not in alignment with my adaptive capabilities and capacities. And so things fell apart pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are the four levels that I really work with. And I think that anyone listening can can reflect on each of those levels, um, you know, from this, their, their core set of values and beliefs in their business and in their purpose and in terms of their mission and what it is that they want to achieve. And I think that that alone um, is a big step forward in, in in pushing that leadership and leading that change um, that we were talking about. And how often would you say, because in some of the things that you're mentioning and just in leadership in general, I know that you probably have a regular review that you do of yourself. And I think yeah. everybody's a little different that way. So what is something that is a non-negotiable in your day that you feel like um, helps you to determine, am I doing what I wanted to do? Am I doing the things that, you know, I'm, I'm visualizing and I'm looking forward to, I'm really leading myself. Um, is there anything that you do on a daily basis that you think helps you be successful in that way? I love this question because I used to have the perfect routine. I would get up, I would sit <laughs> quietly, I would have you know time to myself, I would plan my day very carefully, I would make sure that the priorities are set, and then boom, I had two kids. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I'm not gonna lie, my mornings are crazy. Yes. But what I do do and what is non-negotiable is once the kids are out the door, either I take them to kindergarten or my husband does for a couple hours during the day. Mm -hmm. I sit and I have a cup of coffee and I just sit and I just think. think. And I was taught to do that um, by the professor who supervised my PhD because, you know, you get lost in so much information. And I was very overwhelmed. And he said, you know what, Lauren, you like wine. Go sit on a couch, drink a bottle of wine, <laughs> eat mm -hmm. a box of chocolates and just let yourself, let the thoughts flow. Don't think hard. Just, just sit. Just put the topic in your mind and just sit. So if there's anything that is kind of that I'm struggling with, that I feel is kind of difficult, those are the things that I solve in that space of time. And I try to take an hour, but to, and I often go walking, actually. Now mm -hmm. I don't, you know, sit on the couch, but I often go walking. Walking you know, always yes. gets my brain just going, yes. yes. Yes, and what I used to do is I used to always listen to podcasts and things because I was always mm -hmm. like, go, 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 and get more and get more. And then I realized, you know what, this one hour, no podcast, no book. I sometimes mm. just sit on the park bench and stare into space. And that is actually non-negotiable for me because that is where I solve a lot of the problems and the roadblocks. Actually, I identify them and I can solve them often much quicker that way. And it mm. might be that, you know, the same thing is bugging me for a few days, but it's very, very, very seldom that I can't find a solution or move past it because we get all these small roadblocks. And I think one of the big things with you know in business when we don't have that experience of that self reflection and, and and knowing when to stop to actually move forward, um, we forget how valuable it can be to just put things away because our brain and our subconscious are just working at another level. Mm -hmm. And so I found that absolutely essential and absolutely non negotiable because I was not like that three years ago. Three years ago, I struggled with that a lot. And there are lots of little roadblocks. And what you don't want is them snowballing into feeling like your business is a failure. Then we get the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Then the whole world is falling apart. Then we don't show up the way we want to show up. So, you know, it can have exceptionally negative effects. But when you break it down, many of those things are just very, very small issues. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, yeah, if anyone is struggling with that, I would, I would honestly say, like, make it a non-negotiable in the morning. I know if you've got kids, get them out the door. Just take half an hour at least and just go walk around the block. It doesn't matter where. It's completely irrelevant. There's no, you know, there's no secret to this. It's just get out there and free your mind. Put the thought in your, or, or feel it rather. It's often a feeling. 
and put in your mind what it is that's bothering you without thinking too much and walk. And that it's helps. Providing that space. Yeah, yeah, it's providing that space rather than, you know, same thing as not picking your phone up or opening your emails when you first get exactly. up. Are you waking up and putting yourself in thought mode or are you waking up and putting yourself in reaction mode? Um, exactly. And, you know, that's why we talk about a morning routine or we talk about those non-negotiables is to get people out of reacting into planning so that Correct. they can feel more relaxed. Even now I have more and more stuff going on as my girls have gotten older, but we're more relaxed because it's on a calendar and it's planned and, and we have everything yes. set up the night before on the best days. And um, it's very rare that I go, oh, crap, I totally forgot about this, that, or we're not prepared. Exactly. So um, <laughs> I think that that helps keep people calm and feeling yeah. more like they're confident in leading their life. Absolutely. And I time block. That's non-negotiable as well. I, I don't do that necessarily every day. I do it on a Sunday usually, or, you know, a couple of weeks in advance. They are non-negotiable times and that I do not take calls during that time. Mm -hmm. I do not, I don't care what comes in because I used to have a calendar. It was like, I was doing this, but I was always taking calls because, oh my gosh, if a sales call comes in, I have to take it. You know, if we feel like this in the beginning, I have to say, yes, I have to, I have to, I have to. This will drive you crazy, <laughs> like literally drive you crazy. And so I stop all of that and have very particular time blocks. Um, and those are very strict and everything is mapped out. It's a little bit like, I mean, okay, I'm a teacher. So as a professor, I map out everything. So I have yes. like a timetable like you had in school, right? And yes. I literally put it down because otherwise I can't manage you know, two kids, a full-time job. We live in Germany. We don't have help at home. You know, it, it just, you, you, you need to do this. Otherwise you can't run a business. And doing this enables me to run a business that actually still, as you said, gives me the freedom. And I am very relaxed. You know, my little boy is unfortunately often relatively sick. And, and so th that is exactly what allows me to breathe and to take the time out when, you know, when he's not doing well and he needs me and, and, that is very valuable. Although it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, it's so planned and so scheduled that when something comes up from outside, normally people would say, oh, that's going to throw me off. It actually doesn't. It actually enables you to recoup, I find, and, and move forward very, very quickly and easily. Yeah, because without the time blocking, I feel very scattered. However, because, exactly. you know, you don't have a lot of time to switch from one thing to the next thing to the next thing. But I That's found, really you know, similar to I, I'll do, I do all my interviews on one day. I do all of my yeah. um, typing and working on one day. One day is a restaurant day. As long as I can keep things separated, then I'm not losing um, the mental focus that it takes exactly. to switch hats yeah. from time to time. I think a lot of people underestimate that. That's a great point. That context switching mm -hmm like literally kills your brain um, and it doesn't matter it's not about intelligence it's not about anything like that it's not about how good you are at multitasking our brains just don't work that way um, and so when you context switch you're losing 15 minutes to 30 minutes just because you've changed the topic mm -hmm. that's it yeah so Amazing. that's a great point yeah. Well, thank you so much for being on with me today. I, you know, I want to be able to let you get back to the rest of your day. So thank you so much. Um, if you could share maybe one thing that you're creating or you're working on that you have a vision for in the, in the near future, what would be something that you're working on right now? Um, right now, I'm actually working on something very, very exciting, and that is uh, an AI innovation in coaching. So I know people are going to roll their eyes and be like, yeah, AI, but I'm not talking about using chat GPT. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about right. literally working in small groups with industry leaders to ask the question in a six-week kind of boot camp, what is it that AI is actually going to do to help us lead this change? Mm -hmm. And so looking at different topic areas like lead generation, sales, but also client service, um, how do we coach better? Can AI help us actually coach better? Because mm. I don't believe that AI is for writing my book. <laughs> I don't believe that AI is for creating all my content. But I do believe that AI is not the future. It is our current reality. And we as leaders and as coaches and people who want to see this industry thrive, we need to take the responsibility and say, really ask the tough questions of what can this really do for us, for our businesses, for our clients to improve the industry? Um, and so I'm working with another renowned um, educator and academic as well. And uh, we're developing this program right now. So actually, we're looking for some market researchers. Anyone wants to answer a few questions and you're a coach uh, and you would like to know how AI is really <laughs> revolutionizing <laughs> things, I'll, I'll pop the link. You know, no, we're do going into deep market research for that. So that's very, very exciting, I think, because that takes it to a whole different level. And then, of course, I'm developing my own coaching programs and things like sure, that. Sure. Of course, we're always yeah. evolving and adapting <laughs> to, what our, to what our clients need, but also what we need. So 
I love that. Absolutely. Well, thank you again Absolutely. so much thank for you, being Trina. on here today and thank sharing you. what you have going on and how you're making an impact so that, you know, hopefully we can inspire others to do similar things. And if nothing else for them to say, oh, well, that was interesting. Maybe I can do something with that. And exactly. then we can get that ripple effect. That's wonderful. All Absolutely. Right. I love that. Thank you so much, Trian. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Thank you guys for being on this episode on the Be That Create That channels. Hopefully we will see you on the next. And until then, get out there and make an impact, make a difference in the world. And I'm, I guess I'm going to add to this, lead the change, not just be the change. Absolutely. Wonderful. Let's do it. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day, guys.